Greetings scholars, this is Dr. Kennedy. This video is an overview on how to complete perusal assignments. Now perusal is a social annotation tool that your instructor may have integrated into your Canvas course so that you can complete some type of reading or discussion assignments. And so I'm going to show you how you will access those assignments, complete them, and overview the components of evaluating and grading those assignments. Now, please note this video is made for multiple purposes. I created it so other instructors can use it, as well as other students that aren't in my courses um, can access it to see how the tool actually works, how to complete assignments, and how an instructor might grade those assignments. So for demonstration purposes only, my Canvas course that I'm using for this demonstration may not look like the one at your school, but it is going to show you how to access those assignments and complete them. So a perusal assignment will have some type of instructions from your professor or faculty member or whoever's facilitating your Canvas course. My instructions tend to be a little lengthy because I want students to get an introductory video that explains what perusal is. And then it has some content information that's actually from the perusal website itself. Now, please note that if you are taking a course and completing perusal assignments, you will do those in your learning management system like Canvas. You will not go to the website. The reason you do them in Canvas is so that the work that you do integrates with the grade book in the learning management system like Canvas. But I got some of the information to explain what the tool is for my instructions, and then I include a video like this in my instructions so students know how to complete the assignments. And then I let them know how I grade and the amount of responses they need to do. Your instructor will need to let you know the minimum requirements um, as well as what you might have to post to get an A or a B. And this will become a lot more clear as I go through the assignment. Um, your instructor will also need to let you know if they accept late work. But I have examples here. These are again from the perusal website, examples of what a good post looks like and how to get a good score on a single post. And then also here's a link to the website that if you have trouble accessing certain information or if you forget how to annotate, uh, how to comment, those instructions are there on the website. So that links to that. Now in your assignment, your instructor should embed the assignment in here. I'm going to refresh so that my tool shows up. And to complete the assignment, you will see a little bar here that will let you load the perusal tool and take you to the assignment. Some instructors embed it below their instructions. I do not because it ends up being a really small window that you have to work in. So I make you click the bar and it loads it on a new screen for you. And so as soon as you click it, it will open to the assignment you need to do. Now, the first time you log in, an instructor might set it that you have to enter your ID number. Um, and then you do, as when you first enroll, you will have to put your name. Now, please use the name that you're registered in Canvas. Some institutions do first name, last name. Others do last name, first name. My institutions do first name, last name. So when you first go in, the very first time, it's going to ask you in my classes for your name. So please enter your first name, then last name, as you are legally registered with the institution. This is important so that your work links to Canvas because it's going to look for you in the grading role book. And in order to find you in that grade book, it has, your name has to match. Otherwise, it won't find you and it won't link. Um, in my courses, I do ask for your ID number. It helps us verify and make those things link. So please put your ID number if asked to and your name as you are registered at your institution. And for my institutions, it's first name, last name. Other instructors, you might want to double check with them if it's last name, then first name, okay? When you click the bar, 
your perusal tool will open up to the assignment you need to complete. Now, after you put in your ID and your name, it'll take you directly to the assignment you need to complete. This is important. You do not, when you're completing work to be graded, do not go and hit anything on the left menu. As soon as you click out of the assignment, the work you do will no longer link to the grade book. So if you wanna go in and look at all these different buttons to see what they do, as well as the buttons on the right or the top, you're happy to do so, but close it, go back to your instruction page, refresh, and then click the tool again. Otherwise, your work will not link in the gradebook. It's very specific to Perusal. It's how they designed the program. So if it was something that instructors could change, I'm sure some of us would, uh, but we cannot. It's the way that the assignments link and it recognizes you. As soon as you click click off of it, it will not recognize the work that you did in that session. So just make sure that when you go in, if you go anywhere off, not completing the assignment, particularly in the left-hand menu, um, it will take you out of the assignment and you can get back into it, but it won't link to the grade book. So just again, make sure when you click it that you're going in to complete your assignment. You can use these tools because these are the tools that will help you complete your assignment as well as these. But like I said, the first time, if you're just clicking around just to see where things are and you click anywhere on the left-hand side, please make sure you leave it, come back in, refresh, go back in, now complete your assignment, okay? To complete your assignments, um, the annotation tool is right here on the top. You can see it says annotate text. The very first time you come in, it will give you a tour. It'll take you around and show you the different buttons and what they do. Uh, but I'm just going to go through them to kind of explain how they work. So if your annotation tool is on, as you're reading, annotation means that you're going to highlight and you're going to comment based on what you read. And those comments are going to be shared with the class because this is a social annotation tool. The whole idea is that you are going to discuss the material you're reading with your classmates. Now your instructors might group you so that not, if, let's say your class has 40 students, and if you have 40 people writing on a chapter or a peer-reviewed article or a handout, it might get too crowded or jumbled. So your instructor might group you into smaller groups. So even though you might have been in a class of 40, you might only see um, comments and interact with 10 students in the class. But every new assignment, you'll be randomly assigned to a new group. Um, but that just makes it so it's easier to work on the page. Some instructors don't do that, so it might get quite busy. You might see a lot of annotations and a lot of comments. I group so it doesn't look so busy as you're working through. Regardless, if it starts looking like too much work, there's too many highlights, there's too many comments, you can, right next to the annotation tool is a drop down button and you can do it so you can just see your comments first. So I always recommend this to my students. Put it on my comments first, and that way you're reading a clean version of the document. You can do your annotations and then leave, and then maybe the next day come in, and now you might interact with other students. You do have to interact with other students to get a good grade using uh, the perusal tool. You cannot just go in and annotate. It won't give you a high grade. You have to interact with others, have a discussion with them, ask questions, um, upvote them, things like that, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay, so the first time I always tell students, just go ahead and do my comments. That way it's a clean document. And as you're reading, so let's say, for example, um, it says argument is a word that has multiple distinct meanings. So I want to show comprehension that I understand that sentence. So I might highlight this, or if I don't understand it, I might ask a question. And right away, you'll notice in the right-hand side, a uh, place comes up where I can write my annotation. And then this will show to other students and they can interact with me if they agree, disagree, want to answer my question, things like that. So let's say I have a question and I might say, it says, I do not um, understand how an argument might have multiple meanings. Now, I won't get 
very good score for this post if I just put that question. I need to explain why I don't understand and that increases my score for this question. So not only do I want to say I don't understand, but I also want to say what I think it might be or why it's confusing to me. So um, I think it may have multiple meanings because, oops, let me refix this, because people have different perspectives and may frame wording or language differently. Does anyone else have any ideas or explanations? So I'm purposely asking for people to dialogue with me. Now note that you can, it has the rich text editor, so you can bold, italicize, underline, all things. You can add clips, links. Sometimes I'll notice, I get notifications that students might not be understanding something or they ask me a question directly. So I might copy a link for the whole class to see. And so I'll go insert that link either to a video or a website that has additional excuse me, instruction or things like that. So you can use that too. When you're done with your comment, you just hit return and it saves automatically as soon as I hit return. It's in there. You'll notice it highlights that I've asked a question. So now other students, when they go in, they can search for questions to just have an idea of who they can dialogue with and expand on the conversation. If I said something um, that was intelligent that answered a lot of people's questions, there would be another, if this was a comment rather than a question, there would be uh, an appearance on the right side with a check, it, check mark, and that's where you upvote people. So let's say I answered, somebody asked for the definition of an argument, and I gave a great definition. There would be a check mark here in my comment. It will be grayed out. If you click on it as a reader because you like it, I get upvoted, and that's kind of like a thumbs up telling me, hey, great job, your explanation helped me out. Um, that helps my score because you upvoted me, but it also helps your score because you're reading other people's posts and you upvoted them. So that doesn't mean that you can just go about upvoting tons of people just to get a high score. It doesn't work that way. There's like a limit on how high a score you can get for upvoting. So you want to make sure that you save it and use it for the really good comments. Um, that way it improves your score and you want, you're realizing you're improving someone else's score. So you really want to do it to people who deserve that increase in their score. Okay. So as after I do my comments, remember you can go back in and look at all comments, but you can also look by groups, but you'll be assigned at least in my classes to a group and other, if you're in a large class and they put you in different groups and you can merge those groups, you might be able to use that. If you're looking for a specific student, um, you can also hashtag things uh, so, so that people are more aware. You can, they'll trend and then people can search for them and things like that, just like you would on social media. You can ask to see unread comments only. You can ask to see questions, unanswered questions, instructor comments. Um, and not all instructors will comment. Some use this as student space. I primarily use it as student space. Um, the only time I'll post things is if, because there's a lot of misunderstanding and students have asked me questions about it and or I will post discussion questions uh, to kind of keep the interactions going. Maybe there's not enough questions in the discussion, that kind of thing. So I'll ask questions that that way people have something to respond to. Um, and so that lets you see, you can see color highlights by students. So pe as people are posting and you're reading, you'll see that they're, they're uh, highlighted in a specific color. And if you hover over it, you can see who it is. And then if you click on it, you can see their comment. So that's really great. You can also click the button next to it and that's how you annotate figures. So if there's any tables, charts, um, you can go ahead and annotate on those. This one has a table, so I might want to annotate that table. So I highlight the whole table and now I can comment on it on the right hand side. 
Um, there is this page. So if you want to go up and down pages. Um, and then here you'll notice on this bar is quick access to current conversations um, in this area, all conversations and that can that gets overwhelming when you see all those and then that's when you'll realize this button is quite helpful for searching for things. Um, starred comments, thumbnails, if it's a book, um, your instructor might have a table of contents. You can search the readings for certain terms. If they appear in there, you'll find them. This is where you'll get a notification if a student responds to you um, or tries to address you like they do, like if somebody wants to address me specifically, they can do at Vera. And then that, that message will come to me and I'll also get a notification that my name appeared in somebody's post. So I can go and read it, their post, and then respond to them. So it's just like social media, it works that way. Um, here's any bookmarks that you might put on. Uh, but here's notes. Now please note that the notes are different than the comments that you're doing with the annotation tools to interact. The notes button is to create your own private notes in the reading assignment that you have. And you would hit the plus button to create a new note. You can put a note on anything in the reading assignment. It has the rich text editor. You can then save them. You can download them. You can share them, all those things. But they are private unless you share them. They do not count towards grading. But some students, they want to do the annotation assignment. Um, and then they want to do their notes separate so they can do that. And you'll notice that the toolbar goes away if I hit the X, but as soon as I highlight something, uh, the toolbar for comments shows back up. Um, and then here is if you need read aloud assistance. Um, it's pretty good. They've improved it. It has speeds and those kinds of things. It does sound like a computer reading to you. Um, it's very monotone as well, so it, there's no inflections in the voice. Um, but if you need that assistance, that's there for you. And I'm, I'm really glad that they put that in. Um, some instructors will allow you to download your materials. I do as I do. So that book that will appear there um, as well as um, some you can print some of the materials as well. It depends on if it's copywritten or if your instructor provided it or those kinds of things. So that's how you complete your assignment. OK, the more times you go in to have conversations, so every time, okay, I completed some, I'll leave, I'll come back in another day or later that day to see who else posts. Your grade actually improves uh, the number of times you go in and do additional work and converse with other students. If you go in one time to do an assignment, your grade is lower because you're not engaging in consistent dialogue over the time period that the assignment is open. Now, let's say, for example, you're done your work, uh, but you do wanna go in and you might want to see your grade on a past assignment, you would click Gradebook, and then that will show you your name. You'll only be able to see yourself and the grades that you earned on the assignments. You won't be able to see anyone else. Um, here you can see notifications, you've got notes. You can add things to your calendar. Um, these in the course homepage is actually where you'll be able to see all the assignments that the instructor has for the course if they've allowed you to view them. So like in my courses, I allow you to view them all for the semester. But remember, you don't want to go here to go complete an assignment. I can go into it. Your toolbar will look a little different because I'm in the instructor. And I can go into the assignments, but you do not want to enter this way because now your assignment will not link to the grade book. You do want to make sure when you're actually completing the coursework that you go on the instruction page, like I said, and hit the toolbar. And that will launch the tool and now you can work, okay? So I just